Hey, and welcome to Circle Time Magazine. I'm one of your hosts, Virginia C. And I'm your other host, Dawn Williams. We are happy to have you joining our Circle Time with us. And we are in our math series, and today we are focusing on geometry. Yes, we will increase our teacher knowledge by learning what geometry is like in early childhood, how infants, toddlers, or preschoolers are beginning to understand geometry concepts, including the, arts, the attributes of shapes. And next, we'll focus on how young children learn by understanding what's happening in their brains. Mm -hmm. There's new development in the brain research field that can help educators understand what children are capable of and what you can do to support them. And at the end of this, you will have some ways to increase the amount of geometry learning opportunities you can offer during everyday activities, but especially in art and dramatic play. And part of what helps teachers feel prepared in the classroom is to do more learning themselves because we are lifelong learners. Yep. So let's increase our own geometry knowledge. So the first thing you typically think about when it comes to geometry is shape identification, right? Yes. Shape, mm -hmm. uh, squares, rectangles, triangles. Mm -hmm. yep. So we thought it would be good to have our kid correspondent, say the least, put out a shape challenge and ask some adults how many shapes they can name. So let's check it out. Hi, I'm say the least. I'm the kid correspondent for Circle Time Magazine. Today, I'm here with my sister, Gabby. Hi, Gabby. Hi. And we are at the Wa University of Washington campus, and we're going to see how many shapes out of 10 the adults here can count. Come on. Because usually when I think of shapes, I think of donuts. So a maple bar is a rectangle. OK, um, circle, half circle, square, rectangle. How about a pizza? Like a circle shape? Circle, square, triangle, rectangular, prism. <laughs> rectangular, rectangle. Prism. Preller is sort of like a circle, right? And then I like stars. That's a shape. Um, rhombus, that's my favorite shape. Hexagon, um, octagon. <laughs> Diamond, hexagon, octagon. <laughs> Pentagon, cone, <laughs> oval. Star and oval. We got 10. Yay! We did it! <laughs> so let's increase our own knowledge about geometry with Dr. Soleil Boyd, our resident early childhood math expert, and she's on next. Hi, Soleil! Hi, Dawn. Hi, Virginia. Hello. Thank you for being here. We want to talk to you all about geometry in early childhood. Great. Let's do it. So developmentally, what is going on for young children as they learn geometry, and what should educators be looking for? Those are great questions. Uh, and I think about it in a couple of ways. Mm -hmm. uh, developmentally, how children are accessing geometry is really through their senses. Mm -hmm. um, and it begins in infancy, mm -hmm. like everything else. Right. <laughs> uh, so they're crawling through space, mm -hmm. getting a sense of space. They're manipulating objects. Mm -hmm. They're putting them in their mouth. Mm -hmm. And that actually helps them get used to or starts to understand the attributes of objects. Mm -hmm. Their weight, uh, how big they are, mm -hmm. uh, whether they're soft, whether mm -hmm. they're hard. Those attributes attributes are actually ways that we classify what objects are mm -hmm. and can describe them and can compare them mm -hmm. and actually infants start doing that. Mm -hmm. uh, toddlers continue doing that and then maybe manipulate objects you know more intentionally stacking, mm -hmm. piling, knocking over. Mm -hmm. uh, again they're exploring the properties of shapes um, as they work on them a little more actively. And then preschoolers are really working with shapes as well, uh, again, more intentionally to create more complex structures. Mm -hmm. um, 
they're also having developing you know language skills mm -hmm. so they're able to communicate with their friends they're able to combine ideas they're able to talk about what shapes they want mm -hmm. um, and so this is sort of how we might see development progress as children engage with forms or shapes in their environment okay and then there's kind of this other idea that I want to talk about which is this really particular pathway mm -hmm. um, or a trajectory about how children develop skills related to composing shapes okay. so a lot of times we think that oh geometry if you know your square your triangle your rectangle done you know you yeah. got it right yeah. you can go on to kindergarten <laughs> right uh, and it actually uh, kids can do a lot more than that mm -hmm. and and there's like really a pathway they follow okay. uh, so the first phase uh, we could think of as a pre-composer mm -hmm kind of like the infant but it could and it could be any age really mm -hmm. the point is you're on this path uh, that you're just arranging you're looking at shapes you're touching them you may arrange them but you're not really matching shapes okay. uh, or relating them to each other okay so they're just kind of standalone things mm -hmm. um, and the next phase is the piece assembler mm -hmm. so this is a child who may put shapes together in a picture mm -hmm. here's my house and here's my son mm -hmm. right so each shape is really standalone mm -hmm. uh, but but they're kind of there's relating them to each other maybe almost through a story right mm -hmm. this stands for the Sun this stands for the house mm -hmm. um, and they may match a little bit through trial and error so mm -hmm. they may make an incorrect match mm -hmm. and then correct to put it, oh, you know, okay. the right one with it once they try it and see it themselves. Mm -hmm. And this really brings us to the next stage um, in which children are becoming better picture makers. Mm -hmm. They're combining shapes to make a form. So they might put a couple of squares together uh, to make a tower or here's, you know, one leg and here's the other leg. I maybe pretend I have another, here's my other square, two legs, right? So they might combine shapes to make new forms. Mm -hmm. Um, and they're also a little bit able to match now when they think about the sides of shapes, mm -hmm. but not so much the angles of shapes. Mm -hmm. uh, and so they may like take a square and try to match up. Okay, I can do a, this shape here and then oh, this is the same length, mm -hmm. you know, but they're not quite matching it up mm -hmm. completely. They just use length. Mm -hmm. um, so they're getting a little better there at matching, but have a little bit of work to do. And this really brings us to the next stage, uh, shape composer. This is a child who now has had a lot of experiences, mm -hmm. a lot of trial and error, and now they know what they want to do and mm -hmm. what they want to put together. So they might know, I want, um, I had, I needed to have another hexagon. Here my, here's my hexagon. I want another one, and I need two trapezoids mm -hmm. to get that. And I'm gonna, you know, intentionally do that. Mm -hmm. uh, there's a little less trial and error at this okay. stage, and a little more um, kind of accuracy mm -hmm. about how they put their shapes together. Um, and they also may be able to, for example, uh, <clears throat> use multiple shapes to complete a frame. So maybe using two rectangles to fill out a square oh, wow. or two triangles to fill out a square. Mm -hmm. okay. So they're a little bit better at, again, using forms to create new forms. Okay. Yeah, and that's followed by this thing called kind of the advanced shape composer, okay. uh, where they're now combining shapes to make a new shape, so two trapezoids making t a hexagon, and then maybe putting it together uh, with other hexagons to make this honeycomb mm -hmm. idea, right? So turning a, a unit into a shape into a larger form mm -hmm. or pattern. Mm -hmm. And this is followed by just, you know, even more advanced composition and understanding of how shapes fit together mm -hmm. and really then using them to design mm -hmm. new, new pictures, mm -hmm. new shapes, mm -hmm. uh, and express new ideas. Well, in early childhood, we lay, the, we lay a strong foundation. What does a strong geometry foundation lead to? Well, like I said, it's a great way to think creatively and to mm -hmm. express through shape. Mm -hmm. Also, when you get to engage with the physical environment, it helps you kind of bring that physical environment into mm -hmm. your thinking. Mm -hmm. um, and one thing is that as children get a really strong spatial sense and understanding of where objects are in space, it helps them think about the number line. Mm -hmm. So thinking about numbers in a spatial sequence, one, two, three, four, that's actually a spatial idea. Mm -hmm. um, and that can help help children with their number and counting and even operations mm -hmm. skills. So oh. geometry and spatial sense also help reinforce number and counting skills. Wow, wow it's like a mental map you end up having in your mind. Yeah. That. Absolutely, right. Physical experiences become, you know, in, kind of imprinted mentally and then you can use those later. Wow. Thank you so much, Soleil. Thank you. 
On this show, we talk a lot about how children learn, so we thought we'd take some time to learn a little bit about early brain development. Dr. Sarah Lytle is the Director of Outreach and Education at the Institute for Learning and Brain Sciences at the University of Washington, and we're very excited to have her on next to share more about the new research about brain development. Hi, Sarah. Hi. Hello there. Thank you for being here. We are so glad that you're here to talk to us about brain development. I'm very glad to be here today. So tell us what we know now about children's early brain development and um, how it's important to the work that educators do every day. We're learning so much about how the brain develops very early on, especially mm -hmm. for infants. We know, for example, that when an infant is born, their brain is already about 25% of what it will eventually be as adult size. Wow. That's enormous. Yeah. That is. If you imagine your adult weight and height and divide it by four yeah. and imagine that as a newborn baby, <laughs> um, it's a very big baby so brain. <laughs> Absolutely. And if you zoom ahead five years, when a child is entering kindergarten, their brain is already about 92% of what it will eventually wow. be as adult size. So it's an enormous amount of growth in mm -hmm. those early years. Mm -hmm. So what we know is that when babies are born, they are born with almost all of the neurons or brain cells that they will ever have. Mm -hmm. But what's missing are the connections between those cells. Mm -hmm. And so that's really the work of early childhood, is to form those connections. It's as if child, children are born with the telephone poles, but not the wires that connect mm -hmm. them. They have to have a way for those brain cells to talk to mm -hmm. each other. Mm -hmm. And so that's really what's going on when children are, are young. They're, they're forming these connections through all of the experiences that they have in the world. Okay. And so how can educators foster rich brain building experiences? We also know that, that high quality experiences for early learning really contribute to children's brain development. Mm -hmm. And these high quality early experiences contain a lot of different ingredients that we, mm -hmm. we like to think about. Mm -hmm. So we know, for example, that kids really need a certain quantity of language. They have mm -hmm. to get some language input mm -hmm. in order to develop mm -hmm. a lot of those rich connections. Mm -hmm. But it's not just the quantity, it's also the quality. Mm -hmm. So you need to use unusual words with kids. You have to use adjectives. So mm -hmm. we might describe this table not just as a table, but it's the oval oh, wooden yeah. table, for right. example. Uh -huh. And that quality really helps kids build a lot of those connections mm -hmm. in their brain. Mm -hmm. We know that kids are also incredibly sensitive to eye gaze. So, mm -hmm. you know, you might have noticed that when I labeled the table, I looked at the table. Mm -hmm. That really helps kids cue in on exactly what I'm talking about. So all that talking and the hugging and the cuddling and the warm, responsive caregiving, all of that is really what's helping to develop early brain. It's critically important. It's absolutely important. And so even with infants, that's able to happen, right? Yes, absolutely. And so when we're thinking about kids, kids are really building their expectations about the world based on those experiences they have. Mm -hmm. And so when an infant has somebody who comforts them when they cry, for example, they're starting to learn that when I'm upset, there's somebody who's going to be very responsive to mm -hmm. my needs. I think we even have a video example. Let's Thank check you. it out. There it is. Are you going to stand up big and tall with that red cup? I see. Oh, for me? Thank you. Let's see what we can put inside of this red cup. Here's another red cup. It's a little bit smaller. I wonder if it fits inside of that cup. It does, Ava. You put the little cup inside of the big cup. It fits in there. And you took it back out. So in this video, you saw that the, t the caregiver here was narrating the scene for the child. We often think of this as, as sort of the caregiver being the sportscaster. Mm -hmm. What's going on in this mm -hmm. scene? She's labeling things for the child. Mm -hmm. She's describing relationships. So she's talking about the big cup and the small cup, yeah. and it, you know, does it fit? She's, it's the big red cup, so mm -hmm. she's labeling colors. But she's also doing something that's really important, which is inviting exploration. Mm -hmm. So what do you think will happen if? Yeah. And that's something that we call scaffolding. And it's really kind of pushing children beyond their natural boundaries to think about what might happen next. Mm -hmm. So, you know, what is your prediction? Those are very early yeah, scientific yeah, skills yeah, that are right. critically important. And then she's even introducing spatial concepts right. Right, with an infant. Absolutely. So what's going on there really is early math yeah. in its most pure form. Oh, yeah. So how can teachers support brain development in connecting early math to geometry? Well, a lot of what you saw in this video is a great example of that. Mm -hmm. So it's taking a lot of these everyday experiences mm -hmm. that kids are experiencing in this classroom environment and really making the most of it. Mm -hmm. We know that math happens all the time for mm -hmm. kids. In fact, some estimates say that 
during children's natural play time, they spend almost half of their time doing math or science related play. Wow. That's incredible. Yeah. So it means that we don't necessarily need to create new mm. opportunities for mm. kids to do math and science. Mm. We just need to support the activities that they're already doing. And maybe be able to recognize those as math learning opportunities. Absolutely. I think sometimes as adults we get very afraid of, you know, doing a math activity. It right, feels right. it feels, you know, very nerve wracking to us yeah. because, you know, maybe I don't feel like I'm very good at math. Mm -hmm. But you have to remember that for an infant, for a preschooler, for a toddler, you know, math is thinking about relationships, big yeah. and small, yeah. tall and short. Mm -hmm. It's thinking about whether something fits. It's yeah. putting things into categories. So, you know, categories of, of you know, wooden blocks and categories of plastic box mm -hmm. for, blocks, for example. So um, in dramatic play, for example, let's, what were some math learning opportunities we could see there? I think you know math happens all the time and certainly in dramatic play mm -hmm. too. Um, I was recently in a preschool where we saw a couple of girls in full-on princess outfits mm -hmm. playing with their castle, but the entire time they're talking about the big doll, the smaller doll, oh, yeah. upstairs, downstairs, mm -hmm. All of these things are incredibly rich math concepts. So even, you know, you, you see the girls playing princesses, but what's really happening is a lot of rich math learning. So what a teacher could do is come by and uh, maybe it's just observing for a moment mm -hmm. and thinking, okay, I can point out um, some things about size. Maybe there's some different shape things they're playing with. Like it's finding those opportunities to add more math language and maybe present those problems. Absolutely, absolutely. And so if you look at some of the photos that we have here, in fact, you see a lot of math opportunities opportunities in these mm -hmm. photos. So mm -hmm. the photo on the right might be an easier way to think about math opportunities. So you're, you might be counting money, mm -hmm. you mm -hmm. might be talking about the numbers on the cash register, you might be sorting cans of fruit from cans of vegetables. Right. Those are all really rich math opportunities. But in fact, this photo on the left also has a lot of math opportunity. And you can think about, you know, counting the number of plates and, and the number of mm -hmm. sets of silverware that you need. Um, perhaps you're going to talk about this, the round plates and the round mm -hmm. table yeah. and, you know, what else is a circle in this environment? Yes, yeah. um, you know, you could even think about, you know, maybe we're going to fill up the, the glasses of water halfway and what does oh. half mean? Mm -hmm. And really get a lot more advanced with those concepts depending on what age of children you're working and with. you see it right. and you manipulate it, right? Like it's Absolutely. not just, I'm identifying the shape I see on this paper. Right. That's right. And it's, and it's functional. I mean, you need yeah. you need plates to eat, so you're mm -hmm. thinking about you know the round circular plate that is eventually going to you know hold your sandwich for lunch. Right. <laughs> <laughs> your sandwich that might be in the shape of a square or rectangle. Yes, or rectangle right. <laughs> so thank you so much, Sarah. It's so helpful to know more about brain development and early childhood. It helps educators understand what children are capable of, even as infants. Mm -hmm. Well, I really appreciate how you focused on the teacher interactions, the things that teachers can do and say and engage in just to provide more geometry and math learning opportunities. There's so much opportunity every day, so it's very exciting. Oh, thank you, thank you. Thank you. All right, so let's get into some teacher practices. April Boyce is our colleague, and she was a former preschool teacher who was really great at doing art activities. We wanted to have her on to talk about the geometry that's an art. <laughs> Hi, April. Hi. So we heard what a fabulous art teacher you were. So we wanted to talk to you about the math that shows up in art. Sure. Well, we don't really think about it, but art is a great time to incorporate math. Art is such a fun activity, mm -hmm. so children are already engaged, which makes it the perfect opportunity to embed some math directly mm -hmm. into the art activities. Art is a great time to let children practice their drawing skills as well. Mm -hmm. and. Children learn how to write in stages, and the first one is scribbling, mm -hmm. which is super important for fine motor development. After scribbling, they then learn how to draw dots and curves and lines, and then those eventually turn into shapes mm -hmm. by connecting all those together. Oh, when the lines cross and intersect, mm -hmm. and so scribbling was great. Like, I should have saved all that, because yeah. that was evidence <laughs> of that writing, okay. Yeah, so once children have, you know, refined their fine motor skills and strengthened their mu hand muscles, they're able to draw figures and shapes, and then eventually that turns into writing letters and numbers. Oh, it's all connected. That's right. And that is such a high interest activity, like you were saying. I, all these materials are out here. I want to touch them. Mm -hmm. I'm trying not to. <laughs> So how, when you bring out these materials to a group of children, how can we make sure they're accessible to everyone? 
So art is already individualized when you allow children to express themselves creatively yeah, yeah. and do art on their own. Mm -hmm. Teachers can also add some classroom modifications by including different supports in the art mm -hmm. area to support kids with special needs. Mm -hmm. Okay. So how might we do that with the Play-Doh, for instance? Yeah, so let's take a look at this Play-Doh here. Okay. One way to individualize this is just by softening it up in your hands before offering it to the children. So for toddlers especially, you want to do that so that they can access it a lot sooner mm -hmm. and then you avoid the frustration of hard play-doh yes <laughs> yeah also when making shapes you want to encourage children to be creative and you know do it themselves mm -hmm. but you know that child that always asks you to do things for them yeah yes yeah <laughs> so you can give them supports like a cookie cutter wow. for instance oh, nice. and that will help them to do it independently. Ooh, that makes a lot of sense, so that they can be successful in making their own shapes. Exactly. Are you ready for an art activity? I yes. am. Okay, so I brought some magnet tiles here, okay. and many programs have these. Kids mm -hmm. love them. They're very fun and engaging, and I would just recommend using these with older kids, because mm -hmm. they do have some smaller parts that are choking hazards for little ones. So these are really fun materials, because you can do lots with them. You can turn two-dimensional shapes into three-dimensional shapes. Oh. Kids can compare the angles of things, mm. and you can even teach fractions. Oh, oh. look at that. <laughs> That's great, and it also tells you that two triangles exactly. put together make a square. That's right. Hmm. Oh, that's great. So light and magnet tiles are also a really fun way to extend the activity. Mm -hmm. So after children have built their structures, you can place a light into the little building and you can see it illuminated. On a sunny day, you can even take these outside and let the kids build structures, put um, a piece of white paper down mm -hmm. and then they'll be able to see shadows and they can draw and color what they see. Oh my gosh, magnetile shadow art. Uh -huh. I love that, that's I so much love fun. that, yeah, taking it outside. Yeah, so it's a great way to extend the activity in another area of the school. And thank you, April, for helping us to recognize the geometry that shows up in art in so many ways and how children can access it more easily and how even when I'm playing and all that sensory work is going on, I'm manipulating it and that's helping a child to understand yes. it a little bit better. That's oh, right. Awesome. Thank, thank you. Of course. Thank you. So now let's check out some materials in our Try It Out segment. Hi, Kelly. Hi. We're great. Great. Well, today I brought us some materials that will help facilitate geometry in your okay. classrooms. Great. Um, so the first thing I brought are some geo boards, which many of you have probably mm -hmm. seen in your classrooms or um, in your homes. Mm -hmm. And so these are just plastic ones, and they have little pegs on here, mm -hmm. and they just have the like fabric craft loops. Oh, that's good. I like that better than rubber bands. Mm -hmm. Yes, absolutely. They're a little, <laughs> yeah, they hurt right. a little less right? <laughs> if they get you. Um, and these can really be open-ended as well because yeah. you can just give them the cards and they can just make whatever shape they want mm -hmm. to. Yeah. Or you can lead it um, with more specific goals in mind, like mm -hmm. can you make a three-sided shape? Can you make a yeah. four-sided shape? And okay. then talking about that afterwards. Yeah, now it's, then it's like an assessment opportunity. Absolutely, yeah, definitely, that. definitely, yeah. And look at Virginia cool. made some cute ones already. <laughs> And so these ones are like commercially made plastic ones, but mm -hmm. a way that you can also do this is by um, creating your own. Ooh, look at that. Yeah, and so this is an example of one. And on the back, I'll kind of flip it over and show you. This is just like pegboard that mm -hmm. you get at like uh -huh. the hardware store. And then these are just nuts and bolts um, that are on there. And you guys can choose wherever you want to put mm -hmm. them. They just easily screw on and off. And then you can use the same craft loops for yeah. everybody mm -hmm. um, that you were using on the other ones. And they can make whatever they want. Yeah. That and this is really customizable too. So you can kind of put them wherever the children want to. This is maybe something a preschooler can create themselves. Oh, yes. Yeah. I think it's great too that you can actually use these with infants and toddlers if you just kind of made larger knobs on here. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. You could mm -hmm. just use like um, just the little caps that are on the edges for them. Absolutely. We can glue the screws down. Yep. There yeah. You go. Definitely. And they're so beautiful. I was just going to say another really fun aspect of this <laughs> is that they turn out so nice. That they're like, a, a beautiful of piece art. of art. Yes. Yeah, exactly. So you have some art concepts that you can weave into this as well. Right. And that's limitless creativity. 
right? I mean, I can decide where I want to put these into the pegboard mm -hmm. and connect them the way I want to, exactly. forming multiple things. That's like yeah. complex, really thinking about yep. spatial. Right. Spatial relationships. Yep, some spatial relationships. Yeah. Absolutely. Oh. Yeah, so there was a couple of different sizes. You guys can make this as big or as small as you wanted mm -hmm. to as well. Well, I bet you want to know how to make this. <laughs> Check out this video. Excellent. So next I have some materials that are more towards our infant and toddler mm -hmm. age range. And these are just some soft vinyl blocks, which many of you may have seen in your classroom yeah. or possibly have in your home. Um, and these are really great because a, they're soft, mm -hmm. they're big, the children can manipulate themselves, mm -hmm. but they also have the, you know, added bonus of being geometric shapes. So you can yeah. talk about how this is a triangle and it has three mm -hmm. mm -hmm. uh, three sides. Um, you can talk about how this is an arch and it has a curved yeah, side. Yeah. Um, even with the square, you can talk about you know how it is a square, but it's also a cube. So mm. You could get in some of that um, geometric language for mm -hmm. them. Three dimensional. Exactly, and they can still you know build things out of it. Like you put, right. you know, the triangle on top of the square. Yeah. So you can use those types of language as well. Great. It's so sensory. Right, so right. not like totally. not only am I going to be able to look at it and build with it, but I can feel it. Right, right? even if I'm feeling it, I'm touching it, I'm going to touch it. Yeah. I'm going to feel it in my mouth. <laughs> <laughs> so you might as well feel what an angle feels like Absolutely. and feel what a curve feels yeah, like. Or feel like you know this has one, two, three yes. sides, so it has your tactile functions on there too. Oh, right. Right. Yeah, so Love this that. is a really great addition to um, your classroom mm -hmm. or your home too. Mm -hmm. The next thing I have is these are some stencils. And we have a couple of different shapes that we have mm -hmm. here. Yes, yeah, so we've got a pentagon, we've got circles, rectangles. Mm -hmm. And so these are, like I said, these are just stencils. And so um, what we have an example of is these are just some foam sheets of paper. Mm -hmm. And you can put your stencil on there. Your preschoolers oh. can trace it themselves. They can make cut it out themselves. Shape. Cut out, yeah. yeah, make their own shapes, exactly. And then you can use the shapes similar to how you use like pattern blocks oh, yes. and making different like um, art or mm -hmm. different um, stories out of it. Right. Yeah. yeah, exactly. And I think these are really great that infants and toddlers can also use these even though they're not, you know, they're not tracing them, but they mm -hmm. can hold them and manipulate them and um, just become familiar with the shape. Absolutely, right. especially mm -hmm. because the outside is the same mm -hmm. shape as the rest of it too. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And it has the different sizes of shapes too. Uh -huh, I get these foam sheets at the dollar store. Yes. So you yeah, make totally. that, totally. you can cut them up and really, like it's another thing that's so creative. Right. Absolutely. Yeah. It has kind of limitless opportunities yeah. for what you do with them once you cut them mm -hmm. out. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. The next thing I have that's also kind of art related is just some Stampers. Some stampers, some yes. sponge stampers. And so these, a lot of younger children, infants and toddlers and preschoolers, all ages, mm -hmm. I like to do this too, <laughs> is, you know, <laughs> you get to stamp, stamp with your sponges. And so these ones are really nice because they have the, the shape already there. So mm -hmm. you guys can, can talk about and facilitate that. Um, and then if you're younger, you can just use it as, you know, your way that you mm -hmm. get the paint onto the paper too. And a lot of really beautiful things come out of that too. Absolutely. <laughs> And you could also make these yourself as well if you just got square, mm. um, yes. square sponges and cut them out yourself. Oh, yeah. So you can, yeah. you can, <laughs> also a low cost alternative. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the last couple low cost alternatives I have are some, uh, these are just little craft sticks, the yeah. little popsicle sticks. And these just have um, the Velcro on both of the ends. And something that you can do um, for this is you can, have the children make different yeah. shapes. Mm. They can make their own shapes. You could just give them some. They can make their own, and you guys could talk afterwards about mm. what shape they made. Mm -hmm. You could challenge them to make something with three sides. You could challenge them to yeah. make something with five sides, yeah. see what they come up with. So this is a great alternative um, for doing some creativity with that as yeah. well. And again, another different way you can use that is with some pipe cleaners. And so this one is a really great way to do 3D, 3D oh, yeah. three-dimensional art with the, um, 
with the pipe cleaner. So you can talk about how you made a square, you made a cube, you have some triangles. Mm -hmm. um, another really great thing for the pipe cleaners is you can use curved shapes. Mm. So these ones curve where the pipe, where the yes. um, popsicle sticks don't curve. These mm -hmm. ones will curve. So yeah. you can talk about you know making your shapes with circles or with curved yeah. um, on there too. And Kelly, so many more geometry learning absolutely. opportunities. <laughs> absolutely. <laughs> So we got lots of different things for them to choose from. Oh, thank you so much. Of course, absolutely. <laughs> Let's focus on some books in our next segment, Don't Just Read It, Mathematize It. Hi. Hi, Dawn. <laughs> Hi, Virginia. How are you guys? Great. Great. Good. Okay, I've got some really fun books to show you today. All right. All right so I'm going to jump right into it because I know you're talking about geometry, mm -hmm. talking about math. Mm -hmm. So one of my favorite books to talk about geometry is called The Secret Birthday mm -hmm. Message. Okay. It's by Eric Carle. It's a really fun book of shapes and geometry. So let me show you one of my favorite pages. So at the beginning, the story is this little boy is reading a birthday message that one of his parents have created for him and he it's a scavenger hunt so he needs to find the half moon shape yeah. find the star find the rock mm -hmm. um, and then he goes to look for these things within his actual world mm. um, and so it's it's just really really a fun book right that is fun I noticed that there's spatial language in it too right mm -hmm. like he's going down the stairs yes. and through a tunnel and right. under a rock he has to look exactly exactly oh. and so it's really really fun and the back page I love this because it shows the arrows of where he actually went retraces his steps oh. so how fun would this be for kids to do with their yeah. caregivers and their centers yes. Absolutely, and then and then kids can make their own map yes. mm. in their own environment and go yes. wherever um, the clues fit best with them. Right, so and let me tell you that this role playing part of the math mm -hmm. is really important because studies have shown that children who hear stories that have math in them, let's mm -hmm. say Goldilocks and mm -hmm. the Three Bears, for example, mm -hmm. right? And then they act it out. They're supported by their caregivers, their mm -hmm. teachers to act it out, to role play mm -hmm. within their setting. Mm -hmm. um, actually that can lower and lessen the performance gap across genders. Wow. So kids who act out, out these stories, it's just amazing that, that that can really have an effect on their performance later. That wow. is so yeah. cool and it's so fun to do. It's so fun to do. I mean children love to act mm -hmm. out, you know, Goldilocks and yeah. you know, three billy goats grass, yes. right? <laughs> so fun. Okay, so the second book I'm going to show you is wild about shapes okay. all right so this is so fun i'm gonna tell you it's magic Ooh. it's magic <laughs> it is magic so we're gonna we're gonna show you a page here that i've got marked so the first part we've got look up in the air and mm -hmm. you can't quite tell what it is first mm -hmm. right you've got some colors here you've got some shapes can't mm -hmm. quite tell but very magical when we put this overlay over the top so we blend the pink and the blue we can see the bird so it's really fun for kids to try to guess what they are going to see and then make a prediction right by these just random shapes and then these two colors together are making this beautiful picture Oh my gosh. So it's really fun. Well, and it's just another representation of shapes and we yeah. like we've, the, it's not squares, it's not mm -hmm. triangles, but right. those are shapes, those are forms yes. that you can kind of create in any way that you're when in an art project that children might be doing or if they're using shape sponges and there's a glob of paint, yeah. maybe exactly. they combine it into something yeah. else and they That's get a right. new shape. That's right. That's right. What could it be? What does yeah. it look like? Oh, now what does it look like when we move right. this little piece of it over? Yeah. So, oh. and I love that you can actually use this with all Age group. So great for family child care providers yeah, because you can really great for family child care use it with providers. infants, toddlers, and preschoolers. Yes, I mean the visual part of it alone right. is just cool. really pretty to right. look at. Okay, so the third book I'm going to show you is a really fun book. So this is a board book, mm -hmm. right? So this is called Jacob Lawrence in the City. Mm -hmm. So this is a book of all of Jacob Lawrence paintings. Mm -hmm. And so kids, really young kids, of course it's a board book, so really young kids will have fun with this book. Um, and the paintings uh, by Jacob Lawrence. I'm going to just show you this one right here. Look at how many shapes mm -hmm. oh, are within this one painting that he's done of the city scene. Well, and there's so many different forms like quadrilaterals, I'd have to call them, right? Yes, because some of them yes. are just four sides. They're right. not necessarily rectangles. 
or squares, but there's different ones, right? right. There. Right. Parallelograms in there, maybe? Mm -hmm. Oh, absolutely. Mm -hmm. yeah. And so really with the real little kids, maybe you're just looking at the square shape and the angles. Mm -hmm. yeah. Maybe with older kids, you're counting how yeah. many squares can you find? How many rectangles? Mm -hmm. You know, what else is hidden way into this? And mm -hmm. it's a gorgeous painting to look at and to talk about Jacob Lawrence. Right. Yeah. Right? Yeah, get There's exposed to more you know, real artists and yeah. their work. and. That's Absolutely. so fun. It's a really fun series. There's a couple more right here that we have um, as well. There's Picasso and there's just a lot of series of those too. So then we've got these books right here. So these I would call not necessarily shape books that you might just automatically think of as mm -hmm. shape books, mm -hmm. but we're kind of using them as yep. shape books, mm -hmm. which yeah. is what teachers and caregivers are going to have mm -hmm. right around there. But if you go to the library and you put in a shape search, mm -hmm. you're going to get all these amazing books mm -hmm. about shapes in the city, yeah. mm -hmm. um, shapes in music. Mm -hmm. And so feel free to look at all of these that are available to you um, at your local library because we really, um, there's so much, so much to see. Oh. Thank you, Kristen. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> Thank you so much for helping us pull the geometry out of books. I love it. There you have it. Hi, I'm Celie, the kid correspondent for Circle of Time magazine. I really like those books that Kristen shared. Let's go see these kids go on a shape hunt. Any diamonds anywhere? No. Hmm. A diamond. <gasps> Sharon? That is exactly right. Check it out. She found that the chain link made diamonds. And the top is like a little triangle. Look at that. Awesome. You totally found it. OK, I'm going to hide one now. OK, did you see where I hit it? You didn't look, did you? OK, let's look for a star. I hit a star somewhere in the playground. You want to try to find it? OK. You made a rectangle. Yes, you made I a rectangle not. with your fingers. Oh, I found you found the star, Joseline. Nice job. job. Okay, are we done with shape looking or you guys want to keep looking? You are jumping. Do you want to look for any more shapes, Sharon? Yeah. Marilyn, Joseline, do you want to look for any more shapes? Okay. What did you find? More shapes? What shape is it? An oval. Look at that oval. And then what about this one? Wow. Uh, a circle. A circle, but remember what it is when it's all round like this? It's, it's, it's a circle when it's flat, but when it's shaped like a ball, it's a sphere. Look at that sphere. You found another sphere. Wow, that looks like that they had a lot of fun and they found lots of shapes on that sh shape hunt. You know what? I don't know if they found a cube, but they should have. Bye. The Behavior Management Minute for today is called Show Me Five. So this is about using your hand mm -hmm. or using a visual in your classroom. There are things that you could print out from um, the Head Start Center for Inclusion that has these visuals. But it's about uh, reminding children to be able to count to five but giving them some things to do every time. Mm -hmm. So, one, your ears are listening. Mm -hmm. You're raising a quiet hand, touching gently, using an inside voice, and then you're using your walking feet. I love that. Just a quick thing to calm us all down, bring everybody back together so that we can transition to the next thing. That's right, and I love that the show me five, you can use it with whatever rules or whatever um, tips you need for your own environment and whatever age group you're working with. Yes. That's great. Well, our next segment is all about you, and we save the best for last by taking some time to offer a resiliency strategy that can help you in your everyday work. Heather Floyd, our former preschool teacher and coach consultant, is here to join us. Hi, Heather. Hi. Hello. Thanks for having me today. Thanks for being here. Yes, we are glad you're here to take care of us. Mm -hmm. Wonderful. <laughs> but the resiliency strategy today, we wanted to talk about awareness and empowerment through mindful practices. Excellent. Have you seen anything like that in your work lately? I recently went to a training actually just last week about mindfulness and one of the big takeaways that I had from it was mm -hmm. that you don't have to have a dark, quiet space mm -hmm. alone. Mm -hmm. And I think um, when I'm thinking about educators and folks in different kinds of childcare settings, mm -hmm. 
um, knowing that and knowing you can just take a quick and easy minute mm -hmm. to center yourself, mm -hmm. to become aware of where you might be carrying your tension mm -hmm. for the day. Yeah. And, and <laughs> me too, me too. Um, and to take some deep breaths during that time. Mm -hmm. Um, whether it's alone or in the midst of just taking a few minutes to, to kind of recenter. So how can we, so teachers are in their busy work day, mm -hmm. right? Any tips on how they could just take a moment? It's tough. We have yeah. so much to be responsible for. What yeah. can we do? Um, well, one thing I've seen in a classroom is teachers actually building it into their routine and mm -hmm. modeling it then also for the children. Mm -hmm. And so really talking about um, how you can move your body to release tension. So yoga. Um, some te teachers have done it like as kids are entering, as a oh, wonderful transition yeah. in. So then they're all taking care of themselves by doing the deep breathing and mm -hmm. they're bringing children into that as well. Mm -hmm. um, so moving your body into different shapes and it ties yeah. in really nicely with today's segment about yeah, geometry. Yes, yeah. um, talking about angles, deep breaths, mm -hmm. noticing if your jaw is clenched or your shoulders are tight and focusing your attention on that area of your body. Right, and downward dog, I'm in a triangle, right? Exactly, yeah, yes. yeah. And That's standing so, tree, so is that one of the ones where you put your arms up yes, and you're, yes. yeah, so <laughs> stretching really tall that back, which mm -hmm. really brings out a lot of people's tension, so. Absolutely. Those are such great tips, thank you. To thank re you. For reminding us that it doesn't have to be, it can just be quick and easy within what mm -hmm. we're already doing. Right. Thank you, Heather. Thank you. <laughs> well, here's your circle time magic tip for the day. One of the challenges with circle time is keeping children engaged and doing movement activities can help you do that. Absolutely. So on the way to circle time, movement is a great way to manage the flow. For instance, you can tell everyone to march their feet to circle. And then, now that you've transitioned into circle moving, mm -hmm. during circle, like the photos Heather just showed a moment ago, it's that all the children were doing yoga. It's a way to maintain mm -hmm. children's engagement in it. And then if they start to get a little bit squirrely, you can switch poses and then they're re-engaged. That's right. And you can also keep them moving while transitioning out of circle. For example, you can say tiptoe to the sink to go wash your hands. See, if you keep them moving into, during, and out of transition yes. and circle, it's very good. Yes, absolutely. All right. So we've come to the end of our time, Dawn. Okay. So you learned some more about what geometry is like for infants, toddlers, and preschoolers through the learning trajectory. We learned about how amazing the young brain is and we learned how much children are capable of at a young age and how educators can foster that development. And hopefully you're walking away with some ideas for embedding geometry learning opportunities throughout the day and, be able to, and being able to recognize those opportunities that are already there, especially in art and dramatic play. That was so great. So great. Thank you so much for joining Circle Time with us. Please complete the evaluation. We'd love your feedback. Mm -hmm. You can also receive STARS credits, and you can use the link available next to this video on the website. See you next time. Bye. 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 Bye.